We're looking at 4.4, the Ready, Set, Go. I hope you're having a great day. Of course, if you need a physical copy of this, I'm gonna link that on this Ed Puzzle. So feel free to click that link or see if you can pop into school and get one from the vestibule towards the right when you walk in. I think that works. Here we go, 4.4. Four. With the Ready, we're writing an equation from a context, interpret notation for inequalities, write an equation that describes the story, then answer the question asked by the story. Cool. So we deal with word problems here. I hope that's okay with you. I don't think it's too bad. Claiming that Virginia's painting service charges $10 per job and 20 cents per square foot. If Virginia earns $50 for painting one job, how many square feet did she paint at the job? Okay, so we read it through once. I'm gonna read it through again. It's a great problem solving strategy. Read it one more time. We have this painting service. It's charging $10 per job, 20 cents per square foot. Virginia earned, and this is Virginia being a person, not the Virginia state. Um, if Virginia earned $50 for painting one job, how many square feet did she paint at the job? Okay, so no matter what, this is one job, so we have that one-time fee of $10. So we're paying that one time. So this happens just one time. And then the 20 cents per square foot, do we add that on, subtract that on? Hopefully you're saying we add that on and that would be multiplying by the number of square feet. Okay, and if Virginia earned $50, it's as if we're comparing this to $50, and we're being asked how much, how many square feet did she paint at the job, okay? Well, $50 should be potentially equal to, um, and potentially the $50 is greater than, I guess you could have it equal to though, um, but okay, so we pretty much have this as a variable. I'm gonna just switch it back to normal number terms now. So it can look like that. Um, let's see. Well, actually let's switch it because we may max out at a certain number of jobs. So let's actually change this so that $50 is less than because we can do a certain number of jobs to get 50, but maybe we did less for some reason. Um, so let's do that. So 50 is less than or equal to 10 plus 0.2x. Well, think of this as a two-step equation. Use subtraction to get rid of 10 here and here. I'm gonna actually take this over here. So 50 less than or equal to 10 plus 0.2x. Let's get rid of 10 here and here. So that's 40 less than or equal to 2x. And then again, we're using the sad map idea. So we used subtraction here. We'll use division here. Divide both sides by 0.2. Actually, so to switch it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they ask us to do an inequality here. It's gonna be pretty straightforward, but 40 divided by 0.2. Let's take this to a calculator um, and we'll do just that. So the calculator is taking 40. We're dividing that by 0.2, claiming 200 so that, and again, I don't know why the, they use the inequality for this. Anyway, all right, so we're back here. X is less than or equal to, no, switch it, sorry. Two hundred is less than or equal to X. So this is claiming that Virginia probably did um, 200 square feet, so 200 square feet. And I'll abbreviate this. Take some time, try problem two. Try problem two. 
Hopefully you tried this because you should have ended up with something that looks like this, 200 for the party cost. And then you're adding on four per person. Um, so you can rewrite this to variables where again, X is representing the number of people at the birthday party where all of this is less than or equal to 324. You know what? Pause the video, try it from here. Two-step inequality. See if you can solve it. You should have gotten that 31 people attended the party, maybe less, but again, I mean, we don't really need the inequalities here. I don't know why they phrase this as using notation for inequalities, but if you eventually solve it with two steps, you're using subtraction here and then division here, potentially getting you 31. There you go. We've got some true or false here when solving the inequality 10x plus 22 is less than two. The second step should say 10x is greater than negative 20 because I added 22, negative 22 to both sides and got a negative number on the right. Well, let's try that. So this is claiming that if we start with 10x plus 22 and it's less than two, we would definitely be subtracting 22 from both sides. Um, with that, that's fine. But you're still left with 10x. And 2 minus 22 is definitely negative 20. But what about the sign? Is it really opening that way? No, there's no need to switch it. So I would say that this is all false. And we made a note of this before and I'll reiterate it here, is that we only switch, so we only switch to the sign if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative number. In this case, having a negative number on one side of the equation doesn't really matter. Or require us to switch the sign direction. And of course we're talking sign direction. So what I have here is correct. This works just fine, but originally they were saying that it should be switched and that's false. You don't need to do that. Uh, take a moment, try six. You should have paused the video and tried six where it's eventually gonna be true because if you're dividing both sides by negative five, you know, trying to get rid of this, X is still gonna be on one side, negative nine still on the other, but notice that there was a switch here. This was originally opening to the left, but you do want to switch it. You do want it to open to the right because you're multiplying. Sorry, psych, you want to switch. And it's kind of going against what we had before, but we switch because we're dividing by a negative number. There you go. So that's why. Hope that's okay with you. The set has you solving inequalities, verifying that the given numbers are elements of the solution set. I'm gonna show you two ways you could do this. Um, this is giving you an inequality, 2x minus nine is less than three. And I'll actually write that. 2x minus nine is less than three. Give you a little bit of the word interpretation here. And this is asking if X equals six is part of the solution set. So I'm gonna show you one way you can do this. And I don't think it takes as much time as the other way. So they're really asking you, if you were gonna rewrite the equation and you were gonna plug in now that X is six, you're really just being asked, and you kind of have to think of this in one way and then reiterate it to the other, but they're asking you, is this a true or false statement with the work that you have here? So you can simplify this. Two times six is gonna be 12. 12 minus nine, it's claiming it's less than three. Can we simplify 12 minus nine? 
We can. So just three, claiming it's less than three. But is this equal to? Is three less than three, or is three equal to three? You should hopefully be saying that this is false. So this isn't a true statement. So you would want to say no. So this is the work Y. Um, we're eventually saying that this is a false statement because again, three is not less than three. It's less than or equal to. If it was equal to, that'd be a different story. Um, the other way I'm going to show you over here is by actually simplifying all of the equations. So instead of plugging in, I'm going to solve it. So this is with solving. So solving the inequality first, where you have this inequality, you just keep solving for X, you can still use the sad map idea. So your first step would be deducting 25 here. This leaves you with four X is greater than negative 12. And then you could divide by four. Fours cancel. X is then let greater than negative three. So then you can ask yourself is negative five. So ask, ask yourself here and we're still kind of plugging it, but is negative five less than negative three? Is that true or false? Hopefully you're saying it's false. In which case we would then want to say no. It's not a solution. It's not gonna work here. There you go. I'm jumping to 14. I'm dividing both sides by three. Again, we're trying to graph this on the number line. We don't need to switch it. So this is just gonna claim X is less than negative two. A few things I can say about this is that we want an open circle and I think it's nice to write it out. So we want an open circle on negative two. So that's about here. And then we wanna highlight the values that are less than that. So we actually, when we're in pretty good shape, our arrow is kind of pointing in this direction. So we kind of wanna highlight on everything from there on out. So these are all good solutions. So that's why we have the arrow going to the left. Um, I, let's see if we can do one where we have to circle. Okay, filled it. Okay, so here we have x for 17, x is dividing by negative seven. Well, we can undo that with multiplication. Notice I'm not even saying what I see, I'm just jumping right into it. So I'm multiplying both sides by negative seven. Uh, my negative sevens cancel, I'm left with x. This is now 35. But what happens to the sign? What's up with the sign? Hopefully you're saying it switches direction. So we wanna highlight, and I'll put this into words, but we want a closed circle. On 35. And then we want this to highlight everything less than, so this is going to the left. So. Let's do this, one, two, three, four, five. Close that circle and draw that arrow. I don't think that these bottom few are tough. I mean, you've been doing this for quite some time. So you just gotta highlight on everything that's to the left from that point. So highlight on everything that's over there. There you go. Um, Hope that this was helpful. If you got any questions, holler, let me know. Thanks for watching.